Hi folks, well it, uh, it falls to me to, to, to give a welcome to, to this morning's event. Um, later on Gray will, uh, Gray will go through the, the annual report which, um, which is a very, very good and informative and easy read and I'm, I'm delighted with that report and I look forward to, to what you have to say later on Gray. Um, and then we've got some um, family favourite speakers this morning, Graham Perryman and, of course, Dale, Dale Hoyland, who's a big family favourite. Uh, and then we, we'll, we'll move on to some other speakers who, if I could wrap up what, what their involvement is, a number of projects that are going on that will involve later on this, this year our younger communities, our, our younger people. Uh, as well as, as as mixing that in with it with the environment and issues of, of sustainability and so on and so forth. So I think as we as we move out of the pandemic and our first sort of actions are getting involved with our youngsters and getting involved uh, with our environment for a community interest company, uh, I think that's exactly in the right place, especially as we've not neglected the business side of the house with the work that continues to to go on with the um, Vista Town Centre project, which is what uh, which is what Dale will be talking about. So, so it's great to see you all. It's always a pleasure to see me, as you know. Uh, and on that closing comment, I'll I'll hand you over to to Gray to go through the annual report. Graham, thank you. That is super, Lyndon. Thank you very much, and welcome to you all, and uh, especially to our speakers. So, let's talk about what we've been up to. So, we've had a belter of a year, despite everything. So, in February, we incorporated as a community interest company, and in March, we did a chairman's handover between Phil Shadbolt, OBE, and Lyndon Robinson, who's our current chairman. Um, in March, at Bista Hotel and Spa, with the support of Oxlet, we ran a Battle for Talent conference, which was superb. And it was unfortunate that that was the last face-to-face -face meeting that Vista Vision had, which has obviously been our raison d'etre, really, of the things that we like to do. We like to get you all together. So after that, everything became virtual. So in April, we appointed Azets as our company secretary and our accountants. Between March and June, we participated in the Salute the NHS project that ran at Vista Motion. And then in June, we did our first virtual meeting, which was forward to work. And this is when we thought we were springing out of lockdown and everything was going to be good. So SE Law, Oxlap and Chilwell District Council put on some great presentations. We were fully energised, but little did we know what was coming. Nonetheless, in July, we contributed to the economic recovery plan with Oxlap and the local authorities. And then in August and September, Vista Vision CIC and the Chamber and other organisations participated in the local plan consultation, which was a great piece of work. In October, we held our next partnership meeting on Zoom, and that was with Oxlep, Activate Learning and Vista Chamber. And they talked about the, the plan for what we're going to do with our reimagining our town centre and more of that later. Um, in November, uh, Vista Motion briefed us on the wonderful work that they're doing. And I'm going to highlight that as one of the areas of our annual report of interest. Um, in January of 2021 is where we began our work collaborating with Chiltern Rangers. And I'm pleased that we actually have Steph and John from Chiltern Rangers today who are going to talk about the work that we're planning to do together, which is really good stuff. Um, we ran a purposeful business event with OSEP in February, and we also participated in the Healthy Bister event in March, which was superb. And then we continue on the Town Centre Improvement Project, and it continues to that day. So if that wasn't enough, we produced our annual report this year, which highlights lots of great stuff that, we're going to, that we've been doing as individual organisations. So if you think about where we're at right now, uh, we're more than one year into our incorporation, and part of that was that we had to state as a community interest company what our intentions were. And that's what's called a CIC 36. So that's our declaration of formation that sits in there. And then we now, at the end of our first year, we have to submit our CIC 34, which says exactly what we did against our CIC 36. CIC 36. So all, all numbers, all letters. But the, the fact of the matter is we said what we we're going to do and we delivered what we said we were going to do. So that goes to Companies House along with our annual accounts that are currently being finalised. I thought it'd be really useful in the annual report to introduce the exec and talk about their roles. So you'll see there's lots of great observers, lots of great directors and members, and there's an explanation about who they are, what they do, and their involvement in our CIC going forward. And if there are any of you on this call who are partners in Vista Vision and have a burning desire to be part of our, our executive, then please 
do reach out to me, let me know, because we'd be delighted to bolster our numbers because we're much stronger as an executive with more input from your good selves. So our forward plan has been published. That's in the annual report. And we're going to highlight some of these in the presentations that we've got to come. So I won't labour on that for now. Uh, we also published our single page business plan. And behind that is a more formal business plan. So that gives you the highlights of who we are, what we're trying to do, what our aims are, what our value proposition is, etc. Um, thank you one and all to everybody that contributed. I love this page because that is a visual indication of your contributions. It's just fantastic and i'm sorry if we nagged you and nagged you and nagged you i hope it, you felt it was worthwhile when you finally read that annual report so let's pick out some of the highlights so uh Bista chamber been working actively on the beautiful Bista website and graham will update us later uh, for the cooper school mark lambert a, a qualified careers advisor he's reaching out to you all he wants you as business owners to consider putting some of the students in there they need work, valuable work experience and apprenticeships. They want to gain qualifications and experience in your organization. So do help mark out with that. Brothertons, considered key workers, have been working hard throughout lockdown. And I love this quote from uh, Alison McCormick. Vista is a great town for our people to live and work in. It's our community. And our strategy includes making a contribution to the success of the town. Brilliant. That's exactly the type of organizations we need in Vista. It doesn't stop. Grange moves continued throughout COVID to, uh, to transact business. And I'm pleased to say that Alice, a chartered surveyor, and Annabelle, a property lawyer, have both joined uh, Peter Cox in uh, Grange Muse. They're his daughters, by the way. And they made full and free use of all the, the great work that was and support that was available through Oxlab, through the Peer Network Programme. So Activate Learning, as you know, are a longtime partner in BIS Division. And they have the Banbury and Bista College, which has over 100 different courses. So talk to your young people, get them involved, find out more about how exciting it is to be part of the Activate Learning Program. And you might recall, they actually presented back in November about all the great vocational courses that are available to your employees. So it's not just for the kids, it's for the mums and dads too. So how about Bista Technology Studio? As you know, Bista Technology Studio was created through a partnership and a collaboration between Bista Vision and Activate Learning. And it's been operating for many years. They've got some fantastic news. They're about to merge with the Bista School. They'll be one legal entity, but they'll have separate aims. And I think it's just absolutely fabulous to hear that. So congratulations to Activate Learning for, for brokering that arrangement. And we look forward to hearing more about that in due course. So Applied Landscape Design, they worked continually throughout lockdown. And I'm delighted to see that they're currently assisting local friends groups and Chirwell District Council with plans for a community woodland between Kingsmere and Chesterton. Go green. That's what I say. And this is fabulous work. And, and actually Applied Landscape Design have been a member of this division for many years. Great people. Um, so reach out to them if you need their help for anything. So as are our accountants and our, our secretaries, more about them later, but thank you for everything you've done. We've had quite a ride this year. So, Bista Garrison, here's a fact that I've highlighted. Did you know that there are 1,100 members of the armed forces working daily in Bista? And there are thousands of members of their families too, all contributing to our vibrant community. A little known fact is that the Garrison not only has the army there, but it also has the Royal Navy and the Royal Air Force. So thank you, Athos, for your contribution. Much appreciated. I know you're on the call. So that's good. Uh, the BISTA Festival is happening this year, September, two weeks of high impact energy and fun, songwriting, poetry, spoken word, uh, visual arts, photography, uh, you name it. We want you to contribute. If you've got even the slightest slither of creativity in there, get involved. It's going to be an epic event. Uh, and it's been running for the last three years. Very, very successful and long may that continue. So BISTA Hotel, they came and told us all about their brilliant uh, lake, the swimming lake that they uh, set up in, in, in 2020. Absolutely fabulous. I've seen it. It's stunning. They've got this assault course. It's just amazing. It's, it's golf, it's fitness, it's swimming, it's absolutely everything. And we're delighted to see that they've now appointed a new award-winning chef, Michael Carr, who's going to take over all of the food. So go down there, get fit, and then fill up on, on fuel, ready for your next... Uh, piece of activity that you're going to do with them. So Bista Motion, they joined us in November and they told us all about their four quarters, heritage, innovation, experience and wilderness. If you want to find out more about what they're doing, go to bistamotion.com. Find out what's going on with the Experience Centre. And good news, 
the Retro Car Fest is coming to Vista. Now, this is going to be a belter. It's between the 13th, 15th of August. If you love cars, if you love music, if you love people, if you love the energy of live events, be there. So what else has been happening? More events are being planned. Vista Town Council have the Family Fun Day in, associ in association with the Armed Forces Day. They've got a Superheroes Children's Activity Day in Garth Park. And I'm sure you're all ABBA fans, there's a tribute band coming to Vista. Now, why I'm so energised about all this is all I'm seeing in our annual report is things are moving forward. We've got through lockdown. We're propelling ourselves forward into this brilliant new place that we are. We're such a vibrant place. Vista Village has reopened with a focus on the community programme. And they have a wonderful Make a Difference programme that they've done. It's in its third year. Now, this will provide a fund that totals £30,000 uh, with maximum awards of around £4,000 for any organisation. So if you know any organisation that's contributed to the recovery of our community as a result of the pandemic, then please click on that link in the annual report and get involved, put them forward. They probably deserve it and they may not put themselves forward for that. So Backles, what have Backles been doing? Well, I think we all remember during lockdown that we all suddenly discovered that we could bake. I, I, I personally didn't discover that, but my wife did. I tried to need and get involved with varying degrees of success. But the fact remains, we'd started to do an awful lot of more baking. And I'm pleased to see that they actually were able to adapt their entire supply chain and manufacturing processes to provide 13,000 tonnes of material to a major retailer to allow us to make more buns, which is just superb. And what I'm really looking forward to seeing, and it's highlighted there, as they look ahead, that they're going to be reopening their innovation centre to bring universities, colleges, students and people in to talk about all the innovation in food technology. And best of all, we're going there. We're going there in December as our partnership meeting. And who knows, maybe we'll get to produce our own Bista bagel. I'll just leave that hanging in the air. So Chilwell District Council uh, were the main sponsor of the Chilwell Business Awards this last year. It was virtual. It was brilliant. The overall uh, business award winner was uh, Sunshine Centre in Banbury. And I'm very pleased that this division, along with Wednesday Business Club and the Chamber, have continued to support the Micro Business Award, which was won by Skyway Gin. Husband and wife team, they've won so many brilliant awards. They're such a great local business. And best of all, they're now operating out of Bista Motion. So there's going to be more great gin. So chin chin to everybody on that. Um, Chilwell District Council, if you thought there was any one organisation that really had to throw themselves into the pandemic and deal with the world that we found ourselves in in 2020 and into early 21, that's Chilwell District Council. They've awarded £42 million up, and up to, to over 2,500 businesses. It's absolutely massive. We're so grateful you helped our businesses keep going. And not only that, 100% business rates discount awarded to nearly 1,300 businesses in retail, hospitality, and the leisure sectors. Now we're gonna hear more from Dale later, so I won't I won't spoil his, take his thunder away by talking any more about that, but well done, Chilwell District Council. And again, Chilton Rangers, we're collaborating with them and we're gonna find out later from Steph and John what that collaboration will look like and how you as organizations can get involved in that. So the Elliott Group, if you if you recall, we did a site visit and we saw the new Bista Gateway Hotel. And this should have springboarded a whole series of site visits that we'd had lined up to various locations. Sadly, we had another lockdown. That wasn't possible. They're coming back. But congratulations, Elliott Group. It's a wonderful location and their significant contribution to our community is hugely important and they want to do more work in Bista. They continue to support us and thank you so much for everything you've done so far. So if you need work of the standard that they produce, then reach out to them. So Graven Hill, they haven't stopped either. They're producing so many beautiful homes and I'm so pleased to see that they're now in a three-year partnership with Graven Hill Football Club. That is just amazing. Now, I'll let you into a little secret. I'm a bit of a tech nerd. And what I absolutely loved from their contribution to the annual report was this, their virtual tour. Now, this on their website is basically a site plan, but it's not like any site plan you've ever seen before. This is a series of 360 photographs that show you every part of, their, of the, the environment that they're in. And it's so interactive. It's just absolutely fabulous. This I love. This is the before and after or the part way through. So that's what it looked like when it started it. And that's what it's looking like as it's being greened. So congratulations to Graven Hill for that. Um, I think that, you know, the, uh, the work that you're doing there in providing this vast array of different types of accommodation is just superb. Innovation in that residential space is just superb. 
well done on that. Um, so Sanctuary Housing recently ran a Love Where You Live campaign, and some of you may have put nominations in for some of the categories. Now, sadly, the deadline's finished, so we can't, you can't uh, submit new applications anytime soon. However, the, the actual results are going to come out in July, and we'll publish those, so you'll find out who won the Volunteer of the Year, who was a good neighbour of the year. And second part to this, Beauty and Vista. A huge thank you to Eddie. If there is anybody on this call who doesn't know who Eddie is, I will be agog. I will be absolutely amazed. Eddie is a local person. He's an employee of Value Retail. And during a lockdown, he went on a single person mission to take photographs of the most beautiful parts of Vista. And if there was ever one person who's, who's done more to shape our vision of what Vista really is showing it is the greatest light than it's Eddie. So thank you so much for the work that you've done on that, Eddie. Now, meanwhile, in Oxfordshire, there's a huge campaign that's underway and I'm not going to steal your thunder, Neil. I know you're going to talk about that. So I'm going to leave that hanging in the air. This is an unparalleled and ambitious project and we're going to hear all about that shortly. So OSEP came to us earlier in the year and they did a, a workshop on purposeful businesses. They continue to support the LEP with the uh, program on Escalate and they'll be running that program until sort of mid 2022. So if you're a business that's looking to be more purposeful, if you're a charity, a community interest company, then do reach out to OSEP, great organization. So OCC didn't slow down. Not only were they putting rail bridges in and doing the A41 corridor study, hey, I love this last highlighted section at the bottom there, that they have a new priority to deliver the planned cycle improvements along the Southern and London Road and to attract funding to implement facilities along the length of the Middleton Stony Road. So, gang, all I can say is get on a bike because actually there's some new Sustran routes coming your way. So Oxlet Business have been knocking it out of the park with their peer network programme. So they should be wholly congratulated for all the support they've offered to the business community in, in uh, not only Bicester, but across the whole of Oxfordshire. So they've touched over 150 individual businesses who were brought together in 14 cohorts. And I know there are people on this call who have been part of that peer network programme. They've delivered over 120 action learning sessions. They've delivered 186 one-to-one -one mentoring sessions, and that totals nearly 3,000 hours of business support that was all free to our business community. Congratulations for everything that you've done on keeping our businesses going and getting them energised. But Oxlap have been doing much more, and I'm now going to invite Nick. Nick Ribeiro, the new business skills officer. Are you there? Hello, Gray. Thanks for having me. Can you hear me? Yep, loud and clear. Fantastic. Thanks very much. Thank you, Gray. Thank you, the Chamber. Thank you, all the partnerships for giving me the opportunity to speak to you today. So my name is Nick Ribeiro and I've been working with Oxlep Skills for about two weeks now. And I'm really pleased and proud to be here today, particularly as someone who's lived in Bicester for over 20 years, who has children going through the primary and secondary education system and who's operated as a micro business myself right here from Bicester. So hopefully, as you know, Oxlep's primary role is to champion Oxfordshire's economic potential. And you will have seen enough press recently um, about the urgent need for us to to reskill and upskill as a nation, which has been accelerated through the pandemic as we move into this great economic recovery. So with 99% of businesses operating as SMEs in our region, 89% of those employ fewer than nine people. I'd like to raise awareness about our skill team. So if you're a business looking to recruit new talent, if you're looking to upskill or reskill workers, we can help. We provide up to 12 hours of training and development consultancy worth the equivalent of £1,800 free of charge. We work with you to fully understand your business and its skills needs, and we'll work with you in building a comprehensive skills needs assessment and a training and development plan, linking you to the relevant organisations that can help. We can also signpost you to the right work-based schemes available to you, such as Kickstart, traineeships, T-levels, and of course, apprenticeships, all of which have a great set of refreshed incentivization for you as a business. We also provide labor market intelligence in your industry area, and we provide one-to-one -one support to help your business achieve its skills, training, and development goals. If you need any more information, just search for Oxlep and look at all the information available, including details on events and resources that are available, available as part of your growth. Thank you very much. That's brilliant, Nick. Thank you so much for that introduction. That's, that's superb. So gang, sign up. You know, make make use of these resources. Oxlep are 
by firing away one of your best friends as a business owner. So what else has been happening? Oxfordshire Green Tech celebrated their second birthday in February of this year. Now they have a really interesting initiative here. So being a Yorkshireman, I love roast beef. However, I am going to take up this challenge on the 14th of June, which is called the Switch Up Your Lunch Pledge. And that is try being a vegetarian or a vegan for a day. I'm going to do that. So well done, Oxfordshire Green Tech, for promoting that. They do loads of other stuff as well. Now, what you might really be aware of is that Partners of Bista Vision are honorary partners in Oxfordshire Green Tech and vice versa. So do avail yourself of all of the workshops and courses that they have because they do likewise with us. So we've got a great working relationship that way. Now, the One Planet Oxfordshire project has been running for quite some time and I've highlighted their newsletter. So by regional, great gang. They're you know, a long term member of Bista Vision. Uh, please, if you're interested in One Planet Oxfordshire, sign up to their newsletter. And these are all hyperlinks that are in the annual report. So, oh yeah, here's a little known fact that most people don't know. It stands for Oxfordshire Youth Arts Partnership. Now they were impacted by COVID because lots of the activities they're doing were close quarters and very creative and uh, it wasn't possible for them to meet. However, they have come back out and their youth theatre has just performed Big Bad and Little Red. And I put a link in where you will be able to click on that and you'll be able to see that from the 25th of April onwards. So it's now available on Facebook. And they've also returned back to face-to-face -to -face activities. So if you have young people that you know of that have an evening free, the Drawing Club on Monday, the 26th of April, it's when it began, it's every Monday, then do get your children and get your nephews and nieces signed up for this. A great organisation, long-term friend of Bista Vision. So, did you know that there is a project happening in Oxfordshire called Park and Charge? If you don't know about it, you've been asleep for the last six months. The Oxfordshire Park and Charge project is part of the Oxfordshire EV infrastructure strategy. And this is a desire for everybody to drive electric by 2025 and in the bottom right hand corner you can see Chilwell District Council's electric vehicle being charged with an electric vehicle charge point manufactured in Bista and the man holding the charge point uh, cable itself is Phil Shadbolt, OBE of Zeta Specialist Lighting, the company that have actually manufactured these chargers. So great to see that this initiative is underway. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that project uh, in a short while. So what you might be aware of is that some time ago, there was a Perch co-working space created, not only in Northwest Vista, but also actually in Market Square. Now, due to COVID restrictions, that had to temporarily close. However, things are improving, but the gang behind it, a husband and wife team, haven't slowed down. They took on the old bakery in Vista and turned it into a serviced office from September of last year. They did more. They bought St. Edberg's Hall, and that actually had its first... Uh, first client move in on the 20th of April, and they haven't even stopped there. The old Graven Hill plot shop has now been secured to, and it's going to be turned into Perch Studio. So congratulations to Point of Difference. You're doing great things, and we need more variable workspaces for our innovative new organisations to, to be able to use throughout our town. And their reach obviously goes much beyond Vista, but I'm very partial, um, and I only really i am interested in how brilliant Vista is. So their contribution is well received by all. Now, shortly, we're going to speak, uh, have a, uh, a presentation by Matthew, who's going to talk about the UK Property Forum and PropFest that's actually coming to Bista. So I won't steal your thunder, Matthew. I'll leave it just temporarily um, and let you let you tell us more about that. But what I will tell you about is Catalyst Bista. Now, our, my background's manufacturing. I spent 20 years in manufacturing before moving on to uh, consultancy work. So I love the fact that there is an organisation who is pumping £80 million into an advanced manufacturing and technology business centre. That, to me, is music to my ears. 300,000 square foot of innovation in Bista. Wow, that's exactly what we want. We have some great organisations, very innovative organisations already here. But, you know, nice to see that there is more coming. So congratulations, Space, uh, Spacecraft Consulting, for making that happen. Sprat Endicott, they've actually had to work in, like all of us, in different locations and introduce flexible working. And in all of the time when the property market's been booming and going from strength to strength and the requirements for professional legal expertise has been required because of the complexities as um, the employers have experienced with furlough and, and other matters thereafter, but they're powered on. So well done to you. And I'll just read you out this quote that comes from the end of their submission. It's fantastic to be able to see such an exciting vision and uh, for the development of Bista and its surrounds. 
Spratt Endicott remains committed to the supporting this growth through continued delivery of supportive and excellent legal advice, supporting the local community with their legal needs and via investment in our staff. We look forward to seeing what the future holds. And I think if anything, what Nick has just said about investment in skills, that's, that's a full stop and an underline by Spratt Endicott in their commitment to their teams. And I do hope that you all think about your organisations, your employees, and how you can invest time you know, into upskilling them in that. So try to accept did you know that they actually have nearly 4,200 acres of space across the UK? They're a long-term member of this division and we're very grateful for, for their support. Now, interesting, that they've committed to producing only buildings that are net zero carbon in construction. They signed up to that in April 2021. Guess what? The very first building that they've produced under those guidelines, the first net zero carbon construction building is at Symmetry Park in Bicester. DPD group, boom, 60,000 square foot. Fantastic. I look forward to seeing more and more of this going forward. So congratulations, Tritax. Really appreciated that you're going to take that forward. So Wednesday Business Club, as you know, once a month, open meeting at the Littlebury Hotel. Lockdown happened. It wasn't possible. Not a problem. They went virtual. They've continued to run throughout. But the best news is, as the lockdown restrictions are lifted, they're going back to face-to-face -to -face meetings so you can get your bacon, you can have your coffee, and you can have some networking at the Little Brie Hotel, support local businesses with a brilliant business network. Whitley Stimson haven't slowed down either during it. I mean, they've been in business since the 1960s. They're one of the longest serving local organizations and their contribution to our town is significant. Now, they paid a fond farewell to Stuart Hay, who has uh, worked with them for over 35 years. Um, and that hasn't stopped them. They continue to want to invest in their people. And it's so great to see as they, they wave a fond farewell to Stuart, that they're welcoming in new members to the team and energising them and giving them training for that next generation of experts. So well done to Whitley Stimson. And Zeta Specialist Lighting, last but not least, Zeta actually incorporated a new organization called Easy Charge. And this is their charge point. You saw the photograph earlier. So what are Easy Charge doing? Well, Easy Charge are putting 240 charging bays in across the whole of Oxfordshire. They're working in collaboration with Chilwell District Council and Oxfordshire County Council for the first pilot, which is at, at Cattle Market in Bicester. It's there, it's gonna go live any day soon. Uh, it's state of the art technology. And if we should ever be proud of an organization that's been a long-term member of Bicester Vision, we should be proud of Zeta Specialist Lighting because what they've achieved with that piece of technology is world-class. There is no other charger like it. And we're just so pleased that it's not only for Bicester, it's actually going to be in 23 other car parks across Oxfordshire. And this is just gonna simply support all the great work and the drive that Oxfordshire County Council have in getting us all using electric vehicles by 2025. So do think, be inspired, and do think that actually the future is electric and make your next vehicle purchase or lease an electric one. Okay, gang, that is my, and I can draw a breath now, that is the end of my update. And all I can say is, if I can just summarize this with a single sentence, Bista is booming because of you. Thank you all so much. And now I'm going to welcome Graham Perryman. Graham, are you there? I am indeed. Now, how am I going to follow that, Graham? <laughs> well, I, I think I'm going, I need to go and lay down. Um, do. but what I'll do is I'm just going to gather my thoughts by playing this short video. Did you want to just explain what this video is before I play it? Yeah, absolutely. So um, you mentioned Eddie uh, 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 Bister champion, if you like, uh, he he on the 12th of April on the reopening day went into town uh, on my behalf and filmed some of the lovely businesses in Bister High Street and Sheep Street and so on uh, to, uh, if you like, film the, the reopening and uh, have a look, uh, a great little video. Uh, thank you, Eddie.
just amazing. Absolutely beautiful. It's exactly what we need to see. We need businesses out there trading again. Get out, support your local high street, particularly Vista High Street. Um, this is all about uh, the reopening the high street safely fund. Um, Vista Chamber applied uh, with uh, Chilwell District Council to uh, build a website for Vista, uh, particularly uh, in the initial stages to help us reopen and share some of the good things that Vista are doing and indeed to promote Vista as a destination uh, from many different aspects of uh, what we're doing. So, you know, we've got tourism here, we've got uh, a, a, a a growing high street, as you saw from the video there, we've got new and award-winning businesses in town opening up um, uh, you know, quite frequently now, um, and it's great. So the website which I've built uh, with that funding um, is to try and showcase both Vista um, and the business. You can see the video there that uh, uh, Eddie had filmed. We've got lots of information about um, reopening the high street safely. So one of the ones that uh, is to be uh, everyone to be aware of is that we're good to go. Uh, the Visit England uh, standard of uh, COVID security that uh, many businesses in Bista, I think we've got 15 or 16 businesses now have signed up to that voluntary self-assessment code um, and can put that sign on their on their front door and on their uh, websites to say that they're they take it seriously and that they're protecting their customers and giving their customers confidence. So a great thing to do if, if you run a business and you, you uh, haven't done that, then uh, please get, get on there and, and have a look and do that. Uh, the other things that we've got in the site is uh, I've taken Eddie's, some of Eddie's beautiful photography and I've put it into a gallery here. And again, I would welcome anybody who is a keen photographer or loves Bista they've got any great photographs, whether it's empty Vista like Eddie or whether it's um, full of uh, shoppers or uh, of an event like Vista Festival or, or something else, then I would love to, to see those and we'll share those on the site as well. Don't forget, actually, that this really is a community website and it's, it, it is there for the community, for the community to benefit from. Um, so as part of that, what I've tried to do, it, it's not just for the community, it's also for the businesses in Vista. I've created a business directory, which I have already got 260 businesses listed on here. What I'm trying to do is support local business as part of the chamber, um, but also support the community to find out what businesses in Vista do and what they can buy from local businesses. So the business catchment area is Bista and the surrounding villages. So it's everybody that can support the community in their business uh, and do that. Uh, some great things. I'll, I'll just show you um, uh, one or two things that you can do with this very quickly. Um, so Dragonfly Framing, which is my business here, um, you can add your opening hours. You can add some really lovely, rich content of what your business does. You can even add videos and your location. You can also add events. So for instance, I'm organizing Oxfordshire Art Weeks at the moment, uh, which uh, many of you will hopefully come along to, which is at the Bista Hotel and Spa from the 17th to the 24th. Um, but here I've got the event, I've published it on the site and you can see the dates, you can see more about it. And you can also see some really good videos around the, which artists are attending and, and more about their art and their work. So this business directory is very much um, free until the 31st of December. Um, in fact, it's free all the time. If you just want a standard listing, it's free for good. Um, and also, you get a if you're a charity or a non-for-profit or a group or an organisation that uh, are a club, you can also have a listing here for free, and you can share uh, and get uh, community support, new members, that type of thing from it. Um, and I'm only going to charge from the 31st of December 36 pounds a year, which I think is a very realistic fee given that the 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 businesses have been closed and things. When you think that 
lots of business directories out there charge £40 a quarter or £50 a quarter. So it's a very realistic fee, but um, there is a little bit of cost involved um, going forward just for the um, the hosting and the, the SSL certificates and such like. So it's a fully um, running operational live website now. And you can see that uh, we've got um, literally hundreds of businesses on there already. And one thing you'll note is that Eddie has been very kind in uh, providing all of his fantastic images. He's not only taken great images of Bista when, with no people in, but he's visited over 100 businesses uh, and has showcased those guys um, to their best effect with some lovely images. And so he's used those images in here to, and we've listed those with a picture. So you can see some great businesses with some great imagery as well. So if you're one of those businesses, you can come in, you can claim your business, uh, you can add your rich content and you can support Bista in growing for the future. Um, and if you're not sure whether you're on there or not, there's a search function here, which you can click in and search for your business um, and find out uh, if you're on there or not. So, that oh one other thing community news so this this is really a website for the community uh, it's in its early days yet but i want to develop it because i want to develop it and i want to share news about what's happening in the community um uh, i think gray mentioned it earlier about bista, bista villages make a difference uh uh fund community fund so there's a post on the news section here of everything that they're doing um and some of the uh, uh, of people who awarded money last year and what they did with the money and how to apply. So please, as as Gray says, please do. Uh, if you know someone or you're a you're, you want to do something to help the community, then please apply. Um, so and this will develop over time. I'm not. I, I we've got a, a a plan, but uh, the plan will be driven by local businesses, local community, and people who want to get involved in this. Um, info at. Uh, beautifulbista.co.uk is the, the email address you need to uh, get in touch with me uh, if you need something to you on there. Um, otherwise, you can just go in and register the business and we'll, we'll set you up with your own business. So thanks for listening. I uh, hope um, it's something that the community wants and likes and enjoys. And um, back to you, Gray. That is super. Thank you so much for that. So I'm just going to reshare my screen. Um, how about this is our final holding slide. So there's a URL. I've, put, I've actually put beautifulbistle.co.uk in there. So please do register today, get involved. Let, let's energize Bista. Let's put it on the map, put it in the map, put it everywhere. Let's go global with our local businesses and make the most of this asset that we've actually created for our community. And it's only as good as the content that's created. So please pour stuff in, send it through to the chamber, send it through to info at, uh, because we'd be delighted to make sure that we get more information up there as is reasonably practicable. So let's move on. I'm now going to invite Dale Hoyland on. Dale, are you there from Cherwell District Council? I'm Gray. Hello. Hey, welcome. Thanks very much. Um, yeah, so I'm going to sort of continue the uh, the theme. Um, first of all, providing a, a bit of an update about the uh, reimagining Bistas High Street, uh, Bistas Town Centre um, work, and and then concentrating on one uh, particular element that is moving forwards um, right now. So um, next slide, please, Gray. Um, so you'll be familiar um, with the first couple of slides. This this is uh, around the the outline plan. Uh, that the uh, the Vista Town Centre task group of volunteers has uh, has come up with, um, and it's fair to say that we're we're, we're sort of um, moving on uh, quite quickly, uh, regardless of uh, the remaining lockdown restrictions and um, and and uh, lack of progress in some areas um, isn't holding us up because we're we're sort of pressing on. Um, so there, as I say, you'll be familiar with the uh, the strategic vision. I just wanted to put that there again for for when these slides are circulated. Um, now the the six foundation stones that you see there. Uh, these are the sort of critical um, uh, routes, if you like, for uh, achieving um, a future fruit. Um, and this is what we need in place. And, and again, you'll, you'll have seen this before for those of you that have come to the town centre events. Um, just a quick update on the, on the three on the right hand column there then. Um, so first of all, community hub. 
Uh, we are working um, very closely with Oxford County Council um, and an organisation called Woods PLC uh, that would intend to, um, to, to come up with some design ideas for Market Square, the future of Market Square, how can we make it better, uh, future-proofed, um, more useful to uh, economic uh, recovery, um, and, and, and just generally the, the future, a more welcoming space and a more useful space for, for Vista. Um, so all I'll say on that is uh, over this summer, there will be some events um, to highlight and, and to bring to consultation uh, the ideas that are coming out of that. Uh, the middle square there, communications and brand identity. Well, we've already just heard from, uh, from Graham, uh, uh, Chamber of Commerce, uh, Dragonfly Framing uh, about the website. Um, and I guess the the bit of the project that I'm going to concentrate on in the coming slides um, also sort of feeds into uh, into that sort of central comms. Um, and then on planning policies, I'm aware there's already a landlords forum that's been set up for BISTA, already had their first meeting, inaugural meeting. Um, and I think following me, you'll hear from the uh, Meanwhile in Oxfordshire um, project, uh, which again is, is about a um, a, a, a different way of looking at uh, sort of use um, uh, for uh, empty retail units. Um, so next slide, please, Gray. Uh, and let's go on to, um, so this package of work, which um, Graham has already highlighted, the uh, beautiful BISTA website has come out of, it is all part of a, a package of funding from central government. Um, actually, it's European Regional Development Fund derived. Um, so it's funding uh, that we we spend and then we claim back um, uh, uh, after each quarter against. Uh, it's called Reopening the High Street Safely Fund. Um, so these have facilitated um, five project elements um, plus a, a footfall monitoring, which I'll cover in the next slide uh, requirement, um, which have a 12 month lifespan. Um, and so, so what's coming, uh, the website uh, you've already seen and it's launched um, and uh, as Gray's just said, it's only as good as the content that you put into it. So please, um, you know, do help to, to build that. Um, a retail hospitality and shopping app called Loyal Free, um, which I'll talk about in a moment. Um, and then three uh, for the future, um, we're good to go industry standard um, support. Uh, which I think Graham mentioned as well, actually, and the, there's a link from the Beautiful Vista website to that. Um, uh, bespoke business support, this may be um, in the form of individual uh, building uh, premise audits and things like that. We've still got to procure on that one, um, in fact, so we'll, uh, we'll still be working as to what's best um, to support the businesses out there um, to, to not only now recover, but recover and grow <laughs> and, and sort of um, build, back, build back better. Um, and then finally, a, a roadshow of sustainable travel events. So if we go on to the next slide, this one covers the, um, the, the sort of footfall monitoring um, side of things. Um, early days, but we have data that's starting to, to roll in. Um, and I've just taken a screenshot here, which I'll um, try and sort of um, navigate my, round, my way around a little bit. So the top left graph there, um, I've hovered over the 12th of April um, date um, because that was a, uh, a lockdown list, a, a lockdown lifting um, in the restrictions. Um, so you can see there that there's a significant booster. That was a Monday, so actually it's the following peak, the, the highest one on the graph there, uh, which I think represents the Saturday. So that was the first Saturday after lockdown lifting. Um, and even the Sunday was higher than most of the other um, points on the graph. Um, uh, and then we had a bit of a lull on, on Monday. The following weekend was really quite bad weather, as I recall. Um, so it stayed um, uh, fairly low. Uh, but you can see that the, the, the latest data that I've got sort of from the 1st, 2nd of May, um, again, was, um, was boosted high. Uh, and I think that was a weekend. Yes, it must have been uh, 1st of May, must have been Saturday. Um, you can see some of the locations there so that there's 12 points that we're um, sort of looking at and this these data are derived um, as far as I understand I'm apologies I'm still sort of getting to grips with the uh, the new technology way of collecting data gone are the days of just having a, um, a sort of bean break counter um, across uh, Sheep Street um, as I've done in the past um, which then miss people that walk behind the uh, the post that it was mounted on and all this sort of thing. This is based on um, uh, uh, unique data identifiers 
uh, anonymized, so it's GDPR compliant, of course, um, from mobile phones. So it does miss those people that are not carrying mobile phones. And um, for, for those carrying more than one, then uh, it may get a double count. Um, but, uh, but, but that's what the data is based on. And it's really interesting because you can also look at sort of dwell times that it, uh, you know, the, the, the mobile phone data was communicating with a particular cell tower. And, and now the strongest signal is this one over here. So they've moved into a new area. Um, and it's quite amazing, actually, the, the, uh, resolution that you can break this down. Um, well, more funding would enable better resolution, but we've got 12 points uh, specifically for BISTA, uh, as you can see there. Um, so the graph at the bottom left is sort of showing all points, um, but there's there's a, a thousand and one ways that you can sort of look at this data and, and manipulate it and, um, and, and pull out just, you know, looking at Sheep Street alone rather than Causeway or, or whatever it might be. Um, and the bottom right um, is just looking at one day. So I've picked the 2nd of May, which is the latest day that I've got data for. And you can see the, uh, uh, the, the sort of peaks and troughs throughout the um, hour um, as you go through. So it's at four on two o'clock is the beat time um, on the Sunday. Um, I think for the data, uh, the, there was a question popped up, which I only saw as it um, as it fleetingly went. Uh, information we showed. Yes, um, I do want this to be useful um, all around, really. So um, potentially at a future this division meeting, um, I don't know. Perhaps we can, uh, when, when I've had time to sort of look at the data and <laughs> get to grips with it myself. Uh, I'd be happy to present back and, and we can look at it in, in real time and look at it on the uh, on the dashboard rather than just a screenshot here. Um, that might be a good way. Um, and uh, my contact details are at the end anyway. So, um, yeah, do, do come back to me with any anything specific or any ideas. So um, moving swiftly on, the Loyal Free app is the next thing that I want to talk about. Um, uh, now, Eagle Eye. Uh, members amongst you will see that on the box on the left it says it's funded by the local bid. Uh, well, unfortunately, we don't have a bid for a, a business improvement district, um, certainly not as of yet for BISTA. Um, that would be very useful, and, and it's, it's the sort of um, single delivery mechanism that we've looked at um, on the foundation stone slide uh, previously shown. Um, because it would enable a way of funding future initiatives and things. So, so ignore that it's funded by the bid. It's not. It's funded by, by us, by Chilwell District Council through the Open High Street Safety Fund. Um, and Graham mentioned that, you know, typical prices for, for listings and things, £40 a, a quarter or whatever. Um, well, I see that actually this is more like £40 per business per month. Um, so it's free. It's free for the next 12 months at least, and, and we do want to find a way of continuing um, this because obviously building the, the back-end content uh, of an app um, that supports business, uh, business growth and things is one thing, um, but the, the, the flip side of the coin is then to, to get a user base, and if it ends after a year, then, then that's, uh, that's disappointing. So we do want to find a way of continuing to fund it. Um, so there's some of the um, things that the app will, uh, will do for you. It will allow you to have um, uh, individual profiles, interactive trails, and in fact, um, technology is a, is a sort of um, golden thread um, through our work at the... Uh, uh, reimagining Vistas Town Centre um, task group, um, and it, it looks like the app will enable you to uh, incorporate the augmented reality, so you can sort of, um, you know, have images of how the buildings used to look a hundred years ago, or the Romans charging down Sheep Street at you, or whatever it might be. So there, there's there's some really great, um, you know, potential uh, for the app uh, for the moment. Um, uh, you can run promotions, uh, uh, competitions um, through the app. Uh, also, what works really well uh, is the sort of loyalty um, schemes uh, side of things. So, for example, the you know collect six stamps and get a free coffee or whatever it might be. Um, uh, and I think uh, loyal free make a donation for every stamp, digital stamp that's collected. Uh, through that um, uh, to, to charity. Can you just go back to the previous slide? Sorry, Gray. Is it is it moving on automatically? Um, so yes. Yeah, so instead instead of sort of having you know loads of um, cards in your wallet and things, uh, essentially it's a digital collection for for all of those. 
um, events can be listed on there. And again, you know, we can um, hopefully get some synergy between the beautiful Vista website and the Loyal Free app. Um, uh, trails I've mentioned, competitions, yeah. So it, it, it's a lot of potential. And if you download the Loyal Free app uh, right now, uh, you'll see that Bambi Bid, where there is a business improvement district, they've been working with Loyal Free for a number of years now. And, and there's, um, so, so you'll see all the businesses sort of linked there um, because it works on your location. Um, so it's linked to your GPRS. So at the moment, it'll show you everything that's all, all the good stuff that's happening up in Bambi. Well, we want to replicate that for, for Vista. And next slide, please, Gray. Um, so here's the important information that you need. As I say, it is free and you can contact info at loyalfree.co.uk um, right now uh, with your business name, business address, um, any offer that you want to put up. Um, but essentially, as per the website, um, do these in synergy. You know, let's let's build the, uh, the, the, the content nicely. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, it'd be a fantastic um, sort of thing to, uh, uh, to get built. Um, so there's the information again, and, and if these slides are circulated, then um, you'll, you'll have that uh, info at loyalfree.co.uk um, address. And, and you can contact me as well um, with any queries on this um, or in any further information. And I can send you, uh, there was a screenshot on the, on the first slide of this uh, Loyal Free section, I can send you the, the kind of um, business benefits, what to send and where, um, all the all the useful um, sort of information there. So, so I think that's me. Um, but I just wanted to say, yeah, um, you know, it's it's exciting times, um, particularly for for Vista because there is a lot going on at the moment, um, and 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 Vista has done has done well out of um, funding schemes such as reopening High Street Safety Fund. Um, we have a very busy pipeline uh, coming forward because there's other funding opportunities uh, coming our way, such as the uh, Welcome Back Fund, um, uh, which uh, I know Vista Town Council has uh, uh, is doing a lot of work under. Um, so watch this space. It's um, yeah, it's really exciting for for Vista um, and the uh, the future recovery. That Thanks, Herb Dial. Thank you so much for that. That that's just brilliant. And this is it. You know, Vista just keeps on getting better. And we're so appreciative of all the work that Cheval District Council do. And it carries on. Neil, are you there? You're on mute at the minute. I am. Uh, I'm here. Thank you How very you much, Gray. I'm very well. Thank you. Um, nice, to, nice to be joining you. Shall I crack on? Yeah, go for it. OK, well, thank you very much. I'm Neil Wilde. Some of you will know me. It's always bizarre, isn't it, when you're in these situations and you have absolutely no idea who's listening. But I know Dale is and I know you are, Gray. So that's um, that's a good start, isn't it? Um, some of you will know me. Neil Wilde, Wild Property Consultancy. I've been based in North Oxfordshire for the last 20 odd years and know um, the property market um, very, very well indeed, as do a number of others um, that will be here um, this afternoon, I'm sure. Um, I was delighted to uh, apply for and, and join um, in the uh, the tender for this particular scheme, meanwhile, in Oxfordshire, um, which launched uh, earlier this year, started from the 1st of February. I'm going to spend the next sort of short while just explaining what meanwhile in Oxfordshire is all about uh, and bring us back to Bista, because I know, Gray, that um, Bista is what um, sets your heart on fire. And um, so we've got to make sure it's contextual uh, to Bista. Um, and, and explaining how um, everyone here potentially can uh, be uh, supportive and helpful and um, and signpost people to us for this for this project. Um, thanks for sharing the um, the slides as we go along. So this is a, a summary of the project. It, it is unique, as you, as you said previously, and I've underlined uh, on other occasions, uh, Gray, that it's a unique project in that um, there's often a lot of funding around for different schemes and initiatives, but sometimes I find in my experience that high streets uh, and actively proactively uh, impacting property uh, themselves um, sometimes gets missed. So this is a scheme um, to leverage nearly two million pounds towards empty town centre, high street, urban centre property across the county, Oxfordshire. Not aware this is going on in any other county um, and um, applause to all of the councils, the district councils and Oxford City Council for bringing this forward with the LEP, um, this particular funding. Um, so um, uh, as with these things, tight timescales, deliver it and spend the money by the start of 2022. So that's what we're on, that's what we're doing. Um, 
Great, next slide. Thank you. So Make Space Oxford, also a community interest company. So the contract was awarded to a community interest company, which is great um, for community based organisations, locally rooted organisations. And I joined along with these other organisations, uh, a consortia partnership to deliver the project. Um, I'm I'm the property charter surveyor uh, expert and there's others are working with us to um, deliver the project make space run operate um, some shared spaces workspace orientated spaces in the center of Oxford uh, through their strong links with some of the Oxford colleges and other other landlords in central Oxford I've done a lot a lot of the meanwhile use uh, in other towns across the county previously and I'm locally based and um, so that's my kind of sales pitch other organizations there uh, worthy of of a note okay so the aims of the project we got this slide which is aims and, uh, and the next slide which is objectives um, so it's all about impacting uh, the empty and available units um, within our town centres, urban centres across the county, um, all about helping to bring about change. Um, there's been a lot of discussion, conversation about high streets, their future, um, what are they all about, um, and they've got a fantastic role to play in our local economies and for our local communities. Um, but there's great opportunity to work with the many locally rooted, locally based organisations, small businesses, entrepreneurs that want to get a foothold in our town centres and, and be represented. And this project is all about supporting those people. Thank you. Um, so it's around delivering affordable spaces, supporting those local organisations in a range of uses. Town centres are... Um, uh, ideal for a range of uses so it's it's more than retail as we all know town centres high streets are have a number of functions um, to to play retail being one of them but there's a broad spread and a, a really good diverse mix of uses appropriate for, for town centres and this um, is helping facilitate that bringing the benefits of a place-based renewal to, to communities We've got a certain number of um, deliverables, key performance indices that we need to comply with. So we're, it's an ambitious project looking to impact up to 50 properties units across the county, accommodating 112 different organisations over the period of the project, impacting a certain number of uh, square footage and providing job support as we go along. You wouldn't expect anything else from a, a government funded project. So how does this uh, impact us um, more locally? Um, so the next slide sort of begins to kind of give us a feel for, I'm not expecting you to read this in detail, but we're impacting a lot of places through this project and, and BISTA's there alongside other, other locations across the county. Um, and I've been busy over the last few months using my electric car um, to travel to places such as Whitney um, Abingdon, Farringdon, um, Wantage, um, and of course, Bista. Um, so there's lots of places involved. Um, and um, it, this just helps uh, provide a kind of example of the thought process, the assessments, um, the kind of place-based strategy and approach that we're taking, understanding what each location um, already provides. How can we support what's already good and established? How we can how can we bring more of that? What is each location missing that it that it needs to provide? Those are the types of questions that are that we're asking and, and, and considering. And in in Bista, um, we've got some opportunities. Um, this is the type of stats that I that I look at in each of the locations regularly. This was some stats from March, um, which looked at the number of units in Bista. And, and often people talk about the empty property, but there's always something going on, or usually, um, when you've got an empty, um, empty unit in a, in a town centre. And so this project kind of, um, first of all, um, wants to understand what has been and what is going on with those units. So it's drilling down into the detail, which of those units are actually under offer. Uh, with with a, with a deal going through, which of those units are fitting out? Which of those units actually um, the owners looking to develop and change the use and convert uh, and, and and take some action with? You know, some units uh, are, are potentially being demolished and changed. So it's asking those questions and which are the units which are available and empty 
on the market um, that we can impact. So that gives us sort of an example of BISTA. One of the fantastic um, headlines really already with this project, we've been in it three months and um, you can apply for space. We've had applications from 217 organisations um, interested in space across the county. So that uh, uh, to me speaks volumes and um, we've got a really good system which sort of uh, identifies where they want to be, the types of organisations they are, and they range from individuals, charities, community interest companies, uh, small business, independent retail, um, workplace, workspace orientated uh, organisations. And so there's a vast array of organisations that want town centre high street space across this county. So if anyone ever says to you high street's dead, no one wants to be there anymore, tell them, well, that's not true because it isn't true. Where there's a problem is the gap between these people and the units themselves. And, uh, and through this funding, that's what we're seeking to overcome. Um, so this is a bit of a detailed slide. We present um, monthly to all of the stakeholders and those that have commissioned us about what we're doing and how progress is being made. Um, and so there's a lot of uh, empty property across the county. 278 tells us there and what we've been doing in the first three months is understanding those units looking at them assessing them shortlisting them engaging in discussions and negotiations with landlords about them how can this project support work with landlords um, and as of last week we're, there's currently 60 live discussions negotiations taking place with property owners across the county and we're aiming to secure 10 leases um, by the end of this uh, month on those units across the county. Now, um, I can get into a little bit more detail on BISTA shortly, um, but that's giving you a kind of overview of, of the bigger picture across the, across the county. What we're looking at currently in Cherwell um, are um, some spaces in Banbury and BISTA. Um, one of the spaces I'll give you an example of uh, is the uh, space in the back of um, the former Argos unit in Bista, uh, Argos warehouse. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's an empty shell, wasn't needed by um, the company that took on the Argos retail space. It was a, a building at the back facing Victoria Road. So we're, we've commissioned architects. So the, this is what the project does as an example. The project does a number of different things and can work in different ways depending on the building and what's needed. In this particular example, we've uh, appointed an architect, they've inspected, drawn up the plans, drawn, drawn up a scope of work, we're getting it priced. Now the owner isn't going to get this for nothing. Um, you would expect that they're not. Um, we can deliver the funding, we can organise the work, we can um, bring in the occupier that will take the space and work with the owner on that and organise the leasing around it. The owner has to um, work with us on, on, on each opportunity. And of course, I can sort of share more details about what that means, but each in each instance, it's a different, there's a different scenario that will come through. So we're looking at units that need work. We're looking at units that need a lot of work. We're looking at units that need a little bit of work. We're looking at units that actually don't need any work at all, that we could take on a flexible basis. And whilst owners are thinking, marketing their properties, looking at what they do with their buildings, we can deliver meanwhile uses within those spaces. And that's what we're doing. So thanks for your support. And where you can help us is, um, introduce to us potential occupiers, introduce to us potential owners that are interested in engaging with us in this project. Be delighted to hear from you. Simply Google Meanwhile in Oxfordshire and you'll find a link to the various websites which are, are hosted by the different councils and through Make Space Oxford or my own website. And you can find their ways of applying for space, registering your interest, um, saying you want to talk to us about your buildings. Um, so it's a great opportunity uh, for BISTA. Uh, it's a great opportunity for the county. And uh, thank you for the opportunity to share with you this afternoon. That's super, Neil. Thank you so much for that presentation. Really, really good. We're, we're all energised and we're delighted to see that there's so much focus on our town centres and, you know, let's just amplify the vibrancy of our communities by making good use of great buildings that temporarily don't have an owner. So, uh, yeah, if, you, if you'd be so kind as uh, when we move on to our next uh, presenters uh, from Chiltern Rangers to put your contact details of where people can reach you, Neil, into the chat, I think that'd be really useful. So, moving on, 
we now have John and Steph from Chiltern Rangers. And I was waxing lyrical, John and Steph, about your organisation. We love everything you that you're doing. So, well, Cheers, Greg. You. Thanks very much for that lovely introduction. Um, and, and hello uh, to everybody uh, up there in Bicester. Um, although we're, we're down here in High Wycombe and we look after a big chunk of the Chilterns, we've actually been engaged at BISTA for about five years now, um, working in partnership with the Garrison. Um, so we're very familiar with Lyndon, but also uh, the, the new uh, Garrison commander as well. Um, just to give you a little bit of context, the, there's a fantastic an ongoing project at the garrison that was started about nine years ago now by uh, one of and this is how we came into the piece eventually by paul watts who actually is an ecologist and ornithologist for atkins global and, and he was working uh, on on site on, on a project uh, and he and through that project uh, it got to meet you know gary beckett and the two of them frankly have been instrumental in getting us to where we are today um it's been quite clear from the work they've been doing that Bista Garrison is actually a fantastic nature reserve dressed up as an MOD site. Um, and its value is huge, both in the Buckinghamshire and Oxfordshire context, uh, in terms of the sorts of species it, it holds and, and, and make their home there. Steph will talk to you a bit more about all this in a little while. So essentially, what I wanted to explain to you is how Chilton Rangers uh, has come to be and what we are and how we work at Vista, and then obviously leading on from there, how we would like to uh, work much more closely with Vista Vision and all of the companies around the table or more, more importantly around the screen today. So we also are a community interest company, so it's really good to hear such a, a strong social enterprise presence uh, in, in the Vista Vision world. Um, obviously, we're big champions of what social enterprise can do for people and for planet. And that's really the heart of our business. We're all about engaging with local communities, be they in Wickham, Chesham, Aylesbury, or indeed up in uh, Bicester. And um, we, we're we really keen that we get local people out into those places, but it's for everyone's benefit. For them as individual, uh, it's fantastic to have a morning or a day out in nature for your health and your well-being. I think we're all grateful to nature for the last sort of 15 months in particular. It's been a, sol a place of solace uh, for us all to get out on our daily walks. It's also now time to pay back to nature because we've also uh, we need to look after it. So that's a really important thing going forward. Um, I the the other thing is, hang on, sorry, just something just came on my screen. Um, sorry, I interrupted my flow. Um, beyond beyond that, it, it's a fantastic place for the local community as well. So we want to get people outdoors into nature, the community being young people, being businesses, but actually the real success of, of our work is bringing those things together. And, and to get businesses working with young people, it might lead into opportunities for work experience. We hold uh, a number of work experience placements in, in a normal year, but also then potentially through, through the project that we're about to explain to you, uh, bringing uh, local schools together with the, the various different business partners and to see what we can, what magic we can make happen on the MOD site whilst helping the environment. As you can see, it just stacks up as win, 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 always round. Um, so we've been involved, as I said, for about five years. Chilton Rangers exists only by attracting funding to deliver projects. Um, as a CIC, we do also uh, earn funding from helping different organisations. But we've brought over £20,000 to facilitate some of the work at the garrison over those five years, which has been really exciting. And that's also led them to set up uh, a new conservation group um, and has taken on the work that we've done and taken it another step forward uh, through their project Neptune. So again, lots of stuff happening, loads of different ways we would like to get different organisations involved in doing that. I'll come back to that after Steph has now told you a little bit more about the site and the fantastic work that we're trying to do at BISTA. Thanks, John. Um, yes, I get the, the nice task of showing you some pretty pictures and uh, telling you just how important um, BISTA is. And I'm lucky enough that I lead the groups um, on site, boots on the ground to get the work done. So if one of the first species you'll see is the lovely nightingale, um, as made famous by Shakespeare and Keats through their work, it often used as a symbol of beauty itself. Um, unfortunately, though, the nightingale has suffered a 90% decline in population in just the last 50 years. Um, it's hanging on at Bista, 
which straddles um, Oxfordshire and Buckinghamshire, and they still nest and they're still breeding um, on site, which is fantastic. Um, so it's a home for those as well. They love the dense scrub. We'll talk about scrub in a second. So the nesting um, is just high quality place. The next species, the next slide is turtle dove. <laughs> um which are like a fancy pigeon um but they they there are some a visitor as well um they have a perilous journey across europe and um coming from their wintering grounds in um in africa but they get here and, and they've really suffered from intensive agriculture um loss of habitat again they feed on wildflower seeds um and there's just not that rich we've lost wildflower meadows um in hor horrendous um, amounts over the, since the really the Second World War. Um, there at Vista 2, we have a supplementary feeding programme to keep them there. So that's what some of the funding has attracted from different um, uh, businesses before as well. So we, we do feed them. Um, and then the, the next species is this um, fancy little thing. It's a little brown um, bird, but it's the grasshopper warbler. As the name suggests, it's got the most uh, amazing um, song, if you like, which sounds like a grasshopper. Um, and again, these are at Vista, loving the perfect habitat once again. Um, that's where they get their name, but they are suffering. These are all red list species, the three I've shown you, which means that they are in danger of extinction, not just nationally, but globally as well. Um, and they are here and they're at the garrison. Um, there's also some red butterflies as well, which I won't um, go into too much detail about next. I think that's the next slide actually, Graham. Um, so the brown hair streak and the, and the black hair streak, both rare butterflies, but both are quite strong populations at the garrison. Um, thanks, that's really great. So this is a female, I believe, the brown. Both species, brown and black, feed on blackthorn. Now one likes older, more mature blackthorn, and one likes fresh growth. Um, and so we need to really get that balance of habitat right. And that's where our work comes in. So Going back to the garrison and the habitat that's there at the moment, if you could show the next slide, please. Um, a lot of it is uniform age, um, the same height, and it's untouched. Uh, the army obviously used the site quite rightly for training, etc. cetera. Um, but bringing this into management, um, we then start to open up this dense scrub, leaving some obviously we need what we need for the, the nightingale to nest. But what we're ensuring is that over the years, there is that regeneration. So that mixture of young growth from where we've cut it down, we just let it regrow. You've still got the mature um, species as well. And then when we talk about scrub, what, what is scrub? It's, it's really that sort of transitional phase between grassland and to, to woodland. So it's often made up of younger trees and smaller shrub species like blackthorn and hawthorn. Um, a blackthorn is the sole food plant for those butterflies we mentioned. That means that they lay their eggs and their caterpillars feed on the leaves um, of just that species. So we really need to look after it. And it's that's where it becomes most valuable to wildlife if it is managed on rotation. So you've got the new, new growth and the old growth. Um, if we have a look at the next slide, um, I think we're still there. OK, so um, this is what you could obviously be doing. Um, a photograph on the left is a team of, of young Duke of Edinburgh students who came to help out along with Grundon. Um, so another company that have actually funded a lot of the work. Um, so they've come out and some of our volunteers as well and just joined. They're even smiling look, <laughs> and had a, a great time. Um, we will often get rid of a lot of the scrub by having a bonfire, um, but there's other things that we do as well. And I think the, the next two slides really show the contrast. We have to carry out this work in autumn and winter because at uh, this time of year, the birds, the species we've spoken about are nesting in it. So we don't go in and, and work uh, at this time of year. So the photo on the left um, was last autumn and the photo on the right, the same area last autumn. So it looks quite bleak. You can see how muddy it is there. And <laughs> this was actually what we did rather than remove the scrub. Um, we essentially laid it as a hedge, um, not a very neat hedge, but a wildlife conservation hedgerow. So it, we haven't actually 
killed, if you like, or coppiced the, the blackthorn, but allowed it to regenerate. So remember those two species, black and brown hair streak, one likes young growth, one likes more mature. What we do here is that we save it. And the final slide is at this spring going back. And that is the, the blackthorn there in full blossom. So our work hasn't killed it. Um, and then you get this love, I don't know why I'm pointing at the screen. So you get the, <laughs> the first section where that will regenerate into uh, fresh new growth. Then the middle section, which is it's mature hawthorn, blackthorn, but it's been laid um, and, it, and it's lower. And then behind that, you get the mature stuff. So we're really managing that landscape, if you like, to cater for, for everything. So you'll still get nesting opportunities for those birds in that thick um, scrub. So that's why it's so wonderful and important. There's a pond behind that in the back of the picture. That's full of great crested newts. You know, it's, um, it is so rich in wildlife that we're really lucky to work there, love working there, and hopefully um, we'll be able to take you there too in the future. That's the job. Super stuff. Thank you, Steph. Yeah, I, thanks, Alex, for your comment. I saw that in, in chat as well. Um, it is such an important place that really and also the garrison are keen that it becomes a big part of the community so we're at reaching out through through this division to get local businesses to come along we we run beer range days we'd be delighted to talk to you after that but actually in order for you to experience this we're going to be running uh, thanks to this division um a, a taster session for you all on the i'm just looking at my notes the 16th of september where we're all gonna hopefully meet up graham i'm sure we'll talk to you about the detail list but basically we're going to meet you on site we're going to get you tooled up and helping to actually do some of this fantastic conservation work give us plenty of time to have a chat and explain more about what we do and how and why um and then even better than that if i may say um the uh, BIS division has kindly paid for a session for us to take out the local, uh, some students from the local uh, BIS technology studio. So obviously you spoke about those earlier, Gray, and uh, and the fantastic work that's happening there. Um, I have, we've been in touch that the organisation of that is, is coming uh, along. Uh, and, th and this is the point, right? This is us working across all different sorts of organisations as a genuine partnership, providing opportunities for young people to learn new skills, get out in the outdoors for their well-being. And, and make a positive contribution to your community. It's, it's just the way forward and the way that business will have to, to, to go, in my opinion, uh, if we're all to survive um, in, in all kinds of, you know, words, you know, ways of that survival, be that financial um, and, and also for uh, an environmental point of view as well. And I just wanted to thank you for, for all of for all of that really and the opportunity to bringing more and more people together um that there's loads of different things that we can do throughout the seasons it's not just about uh, these there's there's lots of other things we'd like to do uh, on other sites in vista as well uh, to help you also have more sustainable work areas um and we'd be happy to have those conversations uh, frankly we can do that on the 16th and pick that up on site rather than clog it all up right now so um just to leave leave you with those thoughts that there's going to be an opportunity for you to get your hands dirty and get you know your boots on the ground to help all these fantastic species and uh we look forward very much to seeing you in september great thank you ever so much for the opportunity awesome thank you so much john thank you so much steph brilliant brilliant this is this is exactly how cic's work we engage our communities, we energise the environment that we operate in and we make things better for everybody. So uh, thank you both for uh, the stunning work that you've been doing over the years at the Garrison. And um, I guess it leads really neatly on into community engagement now that I should introduce Matthew Battle. Uh, Matthew is going to talk to us all about PropFest. Now, Matthew, I'm sure you heard earlier, we love Bista Motion and we're delighted to see that you're coming to Bista Motion and we're proud to be a partner in this endeavor. So I'm not gonna steal any more of your thunder. Over to you. Great, thank you. Can you hear me okay, Gray? Loud and clear. Okay, excellent, brilliant. You'll be pleased to know I've got four slides, so um, I, I'm unconscious I'm getting in between uh, people's uh, lunch. So we'll, we'll, we'll crack on through this, but it's just important to give a bit of context and thank you to those other presentations because it's really been fascinating for me. Um, I'm relatively new to BISTA, albeit I've done a lot of work and um, uh, pretty um, well versed in Oxfordshire. Certainly working in BISTA per se is relatively new for me. So you've been incredibly welcoming, Gray, and you've got a fantastic network, which I'm really, really impressed. And I think having worked across the UK in other environments is really interesting to see 
such a network. And also, I think the other interesting thing is there's just so much interest. There's 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 proper demand and also activity going on, which hopefully we, we can reflect at the festival. Anyway, just, just a bit about this first slide, just a bit of context. So I run a property media business. It's called Thames Tap. Uh, well, it's called UK Property Forums, but the main journal, if you like, is called Thames Tap. And it goes out to about five and a half thousand people every Monday. And we talk to the Thames Valley market, if you like. And that's the Thames Valley property market. All aspects, so that's residential, commercial, industrial, and also retail. So we're, we're, we're quite well versed, and we've done this now on and off for five years. I've been doing events for 15 years in the Thames Valley, so we know the area really well. Um, three years ago, um, we took a decision with Oxlep and um, a couple of other partners, we'll come on to them in a minute, to look at an event, and we were in Oxford. And we've done the event in Oxford in the past. And who needs Oxford when you've got Vista? That's what I say. So we are really pleased that we've moved out of Oxford and we were at Keble College. And we're now, as Gray kindly introduced, we're now based at Vista Motion. And perhaps you do the next slide, please, Gray. So we, we, we took a decision and, and it was a big decision to come out of Oxford. Actually, ironically, I'm not just saying this because um the audience today it's actually been it's been really cathartic and actually really positive and actually i think the 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 right decision but also a better decision strangely and I, i'm really pleased to say that um because the event has had more interest at an early stage certainly in terms of sponsors and um looking at speakers than i i've i've i've, I've had in the past so i'm I'm really, really pleased um, that we made the decision and working with uh, Sarah Jane Curtis at uh, Bista Motion, John T, who probably some of you know, we, we, we're going to put on this event on the 9th of September and we'll obviously celebrate Oxfordshire, but also we really, really, and I mean this, you know, quite seriously, want to celebrate what's going on in Bista. Um, we've got some partners who we're talking to, perhaps you could do the next slide, um, Gray. Great. Um, and we're talking to various people across the area. And we'll come on to some of the brands and, and, and what have you. But but um, but just to kind of break it down a bit. Um, and I think it's really important. You know, yes, um, Oxfordshire has a great story, property story. Um, but actually, Bista has arguably and I've worked quite a lot throughout the UK. Um, one of the most exciting um property stories and that comes in many different forms whether it's the the self-build or perhaps the industrial units or what's going on if you just described within the town center there's many unique aspects to it and i think bista can 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 really hopefully use the event to to to, to showcase those but also just in terms of bista motion and i think that's it's quite an important point because there is a, a really exciting story going on at Vista Motion and we're going to bring that out in, in as well and, and what's going on there um, in respect to the, 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 the planning application and the hotel and, and the various other developments around it. So how are we going to do it? Right, well, uh, I mean, at the end of the day, it's not rocket science, but we have to fill this wonderful hangar, Hangar 113, and with your help, we're going to try and fill it. Uh, I've got a lot of space to fill, so we've got an expo there. We've got around 30 stands already um, uh, committed to. We'd love to have more people involved. We're trying to do it as cost effective as possible uh, with our partners. Unfortunately, I can't do it for free, but I have to work. Um, but we need to work with people and we're really keen to, to, to get the expo going and to have a wide group of people you know, uh, whether it's all sorts of aspects of property, as I say, we cross, we work across all sectors and we're expecting between three or 400 people there on the day. Um, and as part of that, we've got two unique aspects during the day. One of the walks and we've organized a walk. Um, um, well, two walks, actually. One, obviously, around Bista Motion, which we're doing with the team there. And secondly, one which will go through Bista, but uh, on its way to Westcott. Uh, to look at uh, the science office there, which is quite exciting. In terms of the talks, 
Um, we've got four sessions throughout the day. We're picking up some of the things we've sort of talked about today in terms of town centre redevelopment. Um, we've got a nod towards Oxford as well, looking at some aspects there, but also wider aspects. And there's so much going on. I mean, the, the, the property is changing so quickly and so fast um, for good and bad. Um, it's just in the white paper yesterday, people probably saw the planning changes, laws changes there. Again, it's, it's, it's setting certain challenges for the countryside, but, but it, it's better to talk about these issues. And I think hopefully we can create a forum where people can talk about these issues. Um, anyway, it's all online. So you can see the talks and some of the people we're talking with. And finally, the awards. So the awards are quite important. We've set up now, this is the fourth year we've done it. We've got 38 awards already and uh, we've got a dinner organized. We've got 350 people as of today coming to the dinner. We'd love to make it bigger. As I say, we've got more space than we know what to do with. So uh, again, please come back to us and, and see what we can do. Do you have the next slide, Gray? Great. So these are some of the partners already committed. I'm sure some of them you know. As I say, we work closely with Oxlet um, and some of the other constituencies there. Uh, obviously, we've got Vista Vision there, um, and 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 also I think there's there's a wider aspect in, in in terms of the Oxford Cambridge Arc Universities Group, which is quite interesting, and some of the aspects going on around the area. Um, I mentioned Westcott, um, but but obviously that there's other small more interesting or or, or complementary developments happening around BISTA, and we can come uh, talk about those, advanced Oxford and experience, experience Oxfordshire. Um, so they're, they're, they're some of the sort of people we're working with, and we've got commitment from other people as well. Anyway, one more slide. Yes, go, just go back one. Gray. Yep, that's it. Well done. So, uh, again, a few other brands there we're working with. Um, We'd love to work with more, you know, please do make contact. Um, we've tried to work with people locally as much as possible um, where, it's, where, it's, uh, where, where it's practical, but uh, the more we can get there, the, the better really. If you're interested in property, it'll be a great networking event. After 12 months of being locked, locked in, hopefully you'll be allowed to be, come to the event and we can have a fantastic day there and hopefully Bista will be a generous host as Gray you have been today so thank you very very much Gray. Hey Matthew it's absolute pleasure we're, we're so excited about this because we are so proud of Bista and I appreciate it's Oxfordshire wide but Bista is the only bit that matters let's be honest um, so thank you for uh, for choosing Bista to do this and uh, a big up to uh, Bista Motion as well for being a, a very generous host to give you that space I know that hangar and it's going to be fun filling it and we're going to thoroughly enjoy being a partner in that so could i just ask something about the talks matthew you mentioned yeah. that there are talks in there what what kind of what kind of organizations you know if we're going to look for people who could exhibit there great could could some of our partners contribute to the talks what what kind of themes and organizations would you be thinking of yeah i mean some of them already obviously we're working with bista in terms of opslep bista motion um, we're talking to yourself at Vista Vision, um, so there are some sort of dialogues there. I'm talking also with the um, the is, is it is it the furniture company? Sorry, I've forgotten, forgotten their name. The Oxford Furniture Company. Oxford Oxford Furniture in Vista. Yes, that's it. Yeah. yeah, sorry, thanks, Dale, and a couple of others. So the answer is yes. Now's the time to sort of pitch in because I've got a sort of. It's like a sort of, you know, smorgasbord of ideas um, and I've got to firm it up. So um, the answer is yes, but we need to get on with it. Yep. All right. Roger that. Well, we'll we'll participate in that and perhaps we can collaborate offline on that because certainly what Bista Vision and its partners would wish to do is to promote the benefits of people living and working in Bista. Um, and we are so proud of our town. Uh, and as I'm sure you've heard, Matthew, on, on this uh, session that we've run today, there's a lot for us to be really proud of. So if there's a platform and a way in which some of our subject matter experts from their respective fields could contribute to some of those talks and indeed exhibit there, then we want to be there because, uh, because we're excited and this matters to us. So thank you. 
Okay, you yeah. And and actually, one other person I forgot to mention was Bista Village as well. We're working with them as well, so um, they're all part of the mix as well. So as I said, there's been quite a few conversations. It's about joining it all up now. Thank you. Yeah, no problem at all, Matthew. And yeah, and Bista Village, long-term partner. In fact, one of the original organisations that helped form Bista Vision. So uh, even better to hear that you're working with Bista Village as well as Bista Motion, another long-term partner, and indeed other organisations. So this is good stuff. Okay, gang, that brings us to the end of our formal presentations. Uh, and I'd just like to take this opportunity without stealing Lyndon Sunner in the closing remarks to thank all of you that have presented today. Um, because it's been a really rich and full program. We've rattled through an awful lot of stuff. Good news is we're recording it. So this is gonna go onto YouTube and we'll circulate the links out with the minutes. So those of you that arrived a little later or had to leave a little earlier, uh, hey, you're gonna see all this on catch up and you can pause whenever you wish and skip over me banging on about all sorts of stuff if you wish to do that. I think what, what we'd like to do is throw the, uh, you know, bring yourself off mute and let's throw it open to further partner updates in this section. And before we start that, I just want to pay, um, you know, respect and offer great thanks to all of those organizations you can see in the column on the right hand side, who have been long term contributors to this division. We only exist in exactly the same way that Chiltern Rangers only exist through contributions. So we are so grateful that you stayed with us. And we've gone through one heck of a year together. And you're still with us. And we look forward to you staying with us and for us to keep growing. So uh, an absolute 100% acknowledgement of all the work that you're doing. You're giving your time, you're giving your money and contributions to our organization. And we look forward to continuing to do more, be more, and get more out of our partnership in the context of BISTA. Now, have we got Phil? We've got Phil, are you, you're, you're available. I just wondered, I'm going to kick things off because I did a, a very uh, sweeping, um, you know, kind of introduction to the Park and Charge project. Now, just for the benefit of those who joined a little later, Phil Shadbert OBE is the CEO of uh, Zeta Specialist Lighting and also Easy Charge. And I talked about the Park and Charge project. Now, Phil, you are the former uh, chairman of Bista Vision, and you were instrumental in incorporating our, our uh, CIC. Uh, and now you've moved on to this amazing project. I just wonder if you want to bring us up right up to speed. Where are you today on it? Okay, thank, thanks very much, Gray. Um, great to see everyone here today and a really wonderful presentation. There's so much going on, even, even though we've been through a really rough year for everyone. It's, it's great to see all the activity uh, and, and all the people here today. So uh, really, really pleased to see how this division is, is progressing and moving on. So the, the, the update is uh, I'll be going to the site tomorrow to switch the chargers on and we'll start the testing of the chargers tomorrow and they're due to go live on the 27th of, uh, of this month uh, and then they'll be open to the public. So if you've got an electric vehicle, um, please pop along to Cattle Market in Vista, try out the chargers and let me know how you get on. So thanks very much, Gray. That, that's that's all I've got to say, really. That's brilliant. And, you know, it, it, it should be noted of what a significant contribution you make to the community through employment. You know, you, you're one of the big guns in town. And what you're actually doing in terms of innovation is world class. Um, and, and there are many more organisations like you. And with Catalyst coming and with Fast at Bista Motion coming, what we are going to do is we're going to transform Bista into be one of the most innovative areas of Cherwell. And that's not at the detriment to other parts of Cherwell. We're just simply going to bring more, more organisations in who actually have that same desire to, to want to inspire the next generation of workers, create the future of technology, make it clean, make it green and make it future proof and make it world class. And you're part of that, Phil. So thank you very much for that. Thank uh, you. Very Lucy. Lucy Busby from uh, Value Retail, are you there? Just wondering if you might want to just tell us a little bit more. I'm sorry that I probably didn't do justice to this, this community campaign that you're doing in the fund. I wondered if you might want to tell us a bit more about that. I'd love to, thank you, Gray. Um, yeah, so we are very excited to have launched our Make a Difference Fund for 2021. As you already mentioned, it's the third year that it's running. Um, but obviously this year it's more important than ever we feel to be able to give something back to our community. So um, the fund is open now for applications. It's a fund of um, £30,000. We're inviting charities, um, 
groups, projects, non, any kind of non-profit organisation really to apply um, for a share of up to £4,000. Um, and, you know, we're very open to, to new ideas, new groups, um, you know, charities that we haven't worked with before. Um, and we're particularly interested in um, projects that are going to help our community recover um, post COVID, uh, you know, during following the, the crazy year that we've all had. So, um, yeah, please do. I, I can put the uh, link to the website in the chat and it would be great if everybody could share it with any charities or groups that they know of, um, anyone that they work alongside, because, you know, as I said, we really want to hear from as many groups as possible, really. Yeah, uh, we also, um, from a community perspective, I, I think it's worth mentioning that we um, have been working very closely with Eddie, the famous Eddie, um, and have sponsored his project in the town centre for um, the Bista postcards that he's giving away through, through the retailers um, in the town centre. Uh, so that's been really great. And we think it's a, you know, a really good way of promoting Bista town and the high street in particular um, we're hoping to extend that uh, to our visitor centre here at the village shortly with some with a, a selection of postcards for our guests too so uh, yeah we're excited about that that's brilliant this is all good stuff isn't it mm. okay now we've got steve thornton from british steve are you there i'm wondering we're, we're putting you on the spot because your camera's turned off i've just turned it on and i'm here how are you steve yeah, very good. Thank you. Very good. Sorry, I haven't been uh, been around for a, a little while. Um, I think it's probably the same for many people working from home and doing many other things with, uh, I think, within the company to keep it going. So, uh, yeah, I think just a brief update on what we're doing at Britta. Uh, it's been a very busy year, I think, managing uh, to keep producing, keep going uh, within Vista. Uh, also, a couple of other sites across the UK, uh, I think, keeping people safe. Uh, which we've achieved um, as a group we're about 20 percent up overall compared to 2019 which is it's great news uh, there is some areas where uh, they have been considerably down um, so coffee catering and vending is probably a big a big part of that where the businesses have been closed uh, and the dispenser business but the consumer the retail products have been considerably um, up worldwide uh, UK is probably about 10 percent up um, so yeah i think that's good news we've recruited quite a number of people as well and we've been producing a lot more uh, within bista which is great for local employment uh, a lot more temps and temporary contracts and also uh, full-time people um producing a lot to support the sales and also stock in germany as well because we're building a new site that is due to open in a few months so um yeah it's kind of exciting news uh, lots of challenges lots of things happening We've launched our new 2025 strategy, which is shaping sustainable solutions. Uh, it's very much focused on environmental impacts that, that Britta have, what things are we doing responsibly. So it's quite a broad thing. There's lots of projects that have started. We've done a few things locally. We've put some uh, solar panels on our pallet store. So it's a small part, but it's made a, a quite a big difference to our power already. Uh, we do have EV charges going in soon. That seems to be quite a hot topic today, which I actually bought an electric car last June. So which Graham knows, we spoke about that recently um, and absolutely love it. It's fantastic. Um, so I will be using local charging points as and when needed um, and also ours when we, when we get them um, put in as well. So and it's great to see that Bista are really kind of championing this and pushing it forward. So fantastic. That's absolutely brilliant. Thank you for that update. Really, really good. So, gang, have we got any more updates from partners? I can see we've got Kim from Applied Landscapes. Are you there, Kim? I'm putting everybody on the spot. They've all got the cameras turned off and they're probably putting pasties and, and drinking coffee and things like that. And I said, oh. I am here, yes. How are you doing, Kim? I'm good, thank you. Hiding. Oh. Although I have, I have had my hair cut now, so... Uh... <laughs> um, yeah, we're good. We're um, we're actually uh, our new our big news is we're moving back into Bista. So uh, really? yeah, we're 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 uh, we're leaving our barn and um, moving uh, moving next to Phil for a little while whilst we um, whilst we find our next forever home. So uh, yes, I'm surrounded by boxes. Are you really okay? 
So, oh, yeah. Oh, we've, loved, um, but, we've loved your contribution you put into the annual report. Yeah, we, we've been busy. It's been, yeah, as, as everybody has, uh, has shared, it's been hard to get, getting everybody out of the office and working from home. Our deadlines didn't stop. Um, construction stopped for a couple of weeks, but I think, yeah, as, as we shared in our little, our little photo update, we, uh, we're, we're really pleased to look back on some, um, some great projects that have, uh, have, have actually happened. So we're still doing site visits and, and have done throughout really. So yeah, some good stuff, some good investment. So yeah, but, but yeah, we're heading back into, back into town. Hey, that, this is music to our ears. This is music to our ears. We want more organizations coming into Bista and, and you, you're such a great organization as well. You know, the, the work that you're doing is really world-class. Um, and, and I think that's a really important aspect of what it means to be part of our Bista business community is to surround ourselves with a community of expert practice. You know, those people who lead the way in their respective fields. And we don't fall short of having those in great numbers in Vista. And there's more space. Neil, you know, the, can I just come back to what you were saying earlier about available space? You know, we think about our town centre. There's so much opportunity for entrepreneurs uh, to actually move into town centres and do things and just have a new presence there that they never thought was available. Gray, are you asking me to, uh, to comment? Of course I am. <laughs> it's great. Um, I haven't had my pasty yet, but I'm looking forward to it. Um, there is. And I mean, there's, what's exciting about Vista, and you've shared um, the, the point of difference workspace um, kind of um, slides from the um, annual report. There's already fantastic um, either co-working or dedicated office space in Vista Town Centre. Um, Andy from uh, Point of Difference was talking to me about the hybrid models this morning, occupying space, um, you know, Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays, and someone else will occupy your, your office on a, on a Tuesday and Thursday. I mean, all of those different ideas and concepts, <clears throat> you know, most, most kind of property firms don't necessarily think that way but are having to adapt and change. And Vista is leading the way in so many different things. And that can happen already for um, individual small businesses, entrepreneurs, um, it's fantastic. And yes, the Meanwhile in Oxfordshire um, scheme will, will take that forward as well. That's what we're trying to do, make a, a, a sea change, a difference permanently in the way that um, we think about um, taking on space, um, commercial property space, whether it's retail, office, hybrid type of spaces it's uh, important that we we adapt and adjust uh, as as uh, as everybody else seems to be sometimes certain industries take a bit longer to adapt uh, but it's great that uh Vista vision you're um you're kind of highlighting all of these exciting uh, aspects that are taking place yeah that's it and this is what it's all about is it's, it's it is highlighting it's so important for us we we collectively need to come out of the other side of what we've just been through feeling really positive and optimistic about what lies ahead. And if we do that, the collective effort and the energy that we all put in, it will be greater than the sum of its parts. And I think we can achieve wonderful things in our town and in our district and in our county and in our country and on and on and on and so it grows. But we need to begin this thing in all areas of the UK. And we're, we're certainly trying to do our little bit in Vista. So that's wonderful. Um, Councillor Richard Moulds, I can see you there, you're hovering. It sounds like you're about to give us an important update from Vista Town Council, Chilwell District Council. Am I right in thinking that? Um, well, you can have an update, Gray, certainly. Um, you'll recall at the last exec meeting, I asked if anybody could help um, accommodate Nice House, the mental house, the mental health uh, charity. Um, we've actually uh, found them accommodation in the Garth, and they will be starting their operations hopefully from next week when they've um, installed the things they need. So uh, that, that's good news, and I think they'll go from strength to strength. Um, couple of other points. The uh, Containing Outbreak Management Fund, which uh, we applied for, uh, we were awarded what we applied for. Uh, and that money, we've received the cheque. Uh, it's now sitting safely in the Town Council bank account. We've already commissioned a special edition of the Garth Gazette, which will give information to every household of, uh, of all those people that have um, supplied us with information on the great things that they're doing to support uh, families and businesses in the you know, recovering from the uh, from from the pandemic uh, there is an article in there again just mentioning um, mr village and their community fund that that information is in there and that will drop on the mat to households uh, first week of june 
So that, that's that's some good news. Um, Dale is spending a chunk of that money on uh, upgrading and updating the the health walks with uh, activities for for youngsters. So that that's another chunk of the money, and it's also going to support the food bank, Charwell Larda, uh, the Vista Baby Bank, and and, that, and, and numerous other um, organisations around the town will benefit. Uh, the one thing we do have to do is to make sure that we can prove we've spent the money and be able to provide those receipts should the government come knocking and say, well, OK, what did you do with it? So, I mean, that's an essential part of it. And I suppose finishing on one note, October the 4th, Dale, I think, is is a Monday and is the start of the Women's Cycle Tour, which kicks off in Bicester on that Monday morning. And just to remind people about that, there will be activities over that weekend and the uh, start will be in Sheep Street, and as they call it in the Tour de France, the Grand Depart, uh, and that will be covered by uh, television uh, and whatever. So uh, we welcome as many people and, and getting as many people involved and trying to do some cycle events with that uh, as well so that we, we get that message across. And I think um, that'll do for me for now. I think I've taken up enough time. Do you know what? Every word is important for us all to hear. And thank you so much, Councillor Mould, for that contribution. Really, really good stuff. OK, gang, we're coming towards the end, uh, but I would like to invite any other partner who hasn't spoken yet, please come off mute. Tell us some good news. Indeed, if you haven't already in our annual report, but this is your last call for any other business before I hand back to our chairman for closing remarks and three outputs for social media. Any final comments, gang? Great. Just, just two quick things for me. Um, thanks to uh, Councillor Mould. Uh, yes, it's it's not the Welcome Back Fund. It's the Contain Outbreak Management Fund uh, that uh, uh, that that all of those good things are coming through. Um, so, uh, so Mr. Town Council, keep an eye out for the uh, Welcome Back Fund because that's yet another bit of funding that's uh, that, that's coming our way um, that I'm aware of. Um, and and just lastly, um, for those of you who know uh, Dean Fisher, um, I think he's presented here before. Um, just to let you know, he sends regards. Uh, he's uh, uh, moved on from Chirwell District Council, so the the existing contacts that you see before you in, in myself, uh, Victoria Walton, uh, I think Steve Newman's on the call as well, um, Robert Jolly was, may have dropped off now, um, but all, all the existing um, crew are, are still here, but um, but Dean no longer, so uh, do direct anything to uh, to myself or, uh, or, or Vic or, or Steve, etc. Thanks, Greg. Hey, thank you very much for that, Dale. And I do believe Lieutenant Colonel Alex Atherton. Are you there, sir? <laughs> Great. Thank you. Can you can you hear me? Yeah, loud and clear. Yeah, brilliant. H hello to everyone. Um, um, I guess I, I just wanted to uh, one. I guess from from a garrison perspective, it's it's incredibly exciting to be to be part of Bister and part of the Bister uh, Bister community, and we very much see ourselves as 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 a, as, <clears throat> as part of it. Um, the stuff that's going on across Bister is phenomenal, and you know that our military, MOD civilian and industry partner families and workers all benefit from everybody on this on this conference's um effort so so thank you um i just wanted to really um just follow up on chiltern rangers um there's a couple of comments in the in the uh, the chat about it, it will the garrison be open to the public um obviously been a military site with some a fairly sensitive activities going on um that the site won't won't be open to to the public per se however the volunteer days that we we run in partnership with uh, Freshwater Habitat Trust and Chiltern Rangers are phenomenal. They literally are quite phenomenal. They've been going on for a decade. Um, the conservation group is doing some phenomenal work in protecting rare birds and butterflies um, and great crested newts. We're a county, a county uh, conservation site. So if your teams or um, or if any of your organisations feel you can help or just want to be involved, then please do get in touch with with Steph and the Chilton Rangers team and, and, and please do come along to our volunteer days. I guarantee the the positive effects on, on your people's mental well-being um, will be well worth with the, the time and effort that they put in. So um so yeah, thanks very much to Chilton Rangers. Thanks again to everyone on the call. And uh, hopefully when COVID is over, I may actually be able to break out and um, and meet some of the community. So thank you. Brilliant, that's wonderful. Thank you very much for that update, much appreciated. Um, so I think that brings us neatly on to handing back to our chairman, uh, Lyndon, for closing remarks and three outputs for our website and social media. 
Yeah, uh, thank you for that, Graham. Uh, folks may have noticed that I did a very quick audition for the role of Laura on the uh, BT uh, advert um, when my IT crashed. But fortunately, Mrs. Robinson is the techno guru, got me back online. So it's uh, it's wonderful to, 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 to be back. Three, three points, I think, uh, suggestions is that the BVCIC's annual report is now published and available online. Uh, another one is the BISTA business directory is online and open with hundreds of businesses available to view. Uh, the loyal free app is live, useful, free and helpful for offers and discounts. That was a hard choice because there was so much else going on that is, that is, that is worthy of um, communicating. We, we are a community interest company. We have an interest in the community. We've touched all the key areas, I think, this afternoon. We've touched business. We, we've worked with young people there and, uh, and we're talking about the environment and, and, and sustainability. An and, and absolute um, coming together of three key interests within, within society uh, at, at the moment. I think, Ray, you pulled together, you and Sarah, pulled together a, a, a terrific uh, online forum today and, and I'm, I'm, I'm really, really grateful. I'm fed up with the, the gloom of Zoom and so I can't wait to, to, to get out on the ground for our first live face-to-face -face, uh, event with, with, with Chilton Rangers and, and the Bista Garrison in, in, in September and PropFest as well. Uh, very much looking uh, forward to that. And can I just congratulate uh, Chilton Rangers for bringing some culture and quality to our meeting. I don't think ever before we've had Shakespeare and Keats quoted uh, uh, during during a forum such as this. So um, you've clearly raised our game um, quite considerably. And so uh, next time I need to, to match you with a bit of Les Dawson and Frankie Howard. Um, with that, folks, I'll uh, I'll bring this meeting to a close. Thank you all so much for joining joining me. Keep safe and uh, and good luck for the future. Looking forward to seeing you all. Uh, don't forget, read the annual report. It's an absolute cracking read. Cheers for now, folks, and thank you to our guest speakers, all of you. You've done terrifically well. Thank you. Cheers for now, folks. Bye-bye. Brilliant. Thank you all for joining us. See you again soon.